how would you go about making a lithium battery gauge? Perhaps you'd use a microcontroller like an Arduino or a raw microcontroller like an AVR or perhaps one of those prefab eBay battery gauges you can get. And while all of those are perfectly suitable solutions, I figured there has to be a more traditional way of uh, getting an estimate as to how much power is left in your battery. And indeed, I need a gauge for a two-cell lithium battery, which uh, really limits my options for prefab circuits. So I'm either bound to some analog thing, or I'm going to have to use a micro, and I didn't want to use a micro. So I jumped into a simulator, and this is what I came up with. It's a six component, single scene, a single transistor, analog lithium battery gauge. And it presents your battery capacity from red being empty to green being full using a dual color LED. So let's have a look at how this actually works. So uh, this is a rather ugly circuit in that it is very sensitive to uh, the parameters of all components involved. Uh, we have the Zener diode, in this case a 4.7 volt one, giving me the correct range for this meter, as well as three resistors, R1 being the current limiting resistor for the red LED, R2 being the current limiting resistor for the green LED, and R3 being the trigger resistor for the transistor, which turns the red LED off when the battery is full. So let's get rid of this 40 hertz sine wave and play around with it for a bit. So we're now sitting at a rather empty battery at 5.9 volts. That is pretty much the cutoff for a two cell lithium battery, three volts per cell, and you're not gonna have much capacity remaining. And as you can see, Right now we have a beta milliamp flowing through the red LED and the green LED is turned off. So the reason for this is that the voltage in the battery is not high enough to actually make current flow through the Zener diode and through the green LED, nor through the base resistor of the transistor. Uh, however, if we slowly turn the voltage up, you can see that the current increases rather linearly in the green LED and it also decreases in the red LED. So at 7.2 volts, which is about 50%, we have roughly similar brightness of the LEDs, uh, keeping in mind that the red LED usually is more efficient than the green one, so it will shine brighter with a lower current flowing through it. So what's going on here is, now that we've reached a bit of a higher battery voltage, the Zener diode has started conducting, and that of course is making current flow through the green LED, but also through the base of the transistor and out the emitter, which of course is making the transistor turn on. And since the transistor is connected across the red LED, that is rewriting current from the red LED through the transistor instead making it glow dimmer. And uh, that accelerates when we turn the battery voltage up higher. You can see at 8.4 volts, a fully charged battery, the red LED is fully turned off because now enough current is flowing through the beta of a transistor to turn it on just enough to shunt the current that would otherwise be flowing through the red LED. This works because the junction voltage of this transistor is of course capable of being lower than the roughly two volts you get across a red LED. And that's about it. It's a very, very simple circuit. Uh, it is a very ugly circuit because uh, it is going to be dependent on the gain of a transistor. In this case, I've used BC327s with HFEs of about 500 to build these circuits. And all the, the other values except for R2 are dependent on the gain of a transistor. And of course, the gain of a transistor is going to vary with temperature and is going to vary with age. So this is not going to be the most reliable long-term circuit. Uh, it's uh, more of a bit of a curiosity, but it certainly has some utility. Just you can't expect any very accurate readings out of it in the long term. Uh, the components which uh, determine uh, the response of a circuit are 
all of them. Uh, if we turn the voltage back down, uh, we can see that uh, if we start with R1, that determines the amount of current which flows through the red LED, but also the amount of current that the transistor has to sink in order to turn the red LED off. So if we change the value of R1, let's make it 1K, uh, now from a rather minor change, we have a circuit that is no longer functioning. Indeed, we are no longer able to turn the red LED off at all. In order to make up for this, we can also drop the value of R3, making it say 100K, and now we can turn the red LED off again, giving us an entirely different response. But if we change the gain of a transistor, let's make it a thousand, we've got a super transistor, and now the red LED can barely turn on at all because so much current is getting passed through R3 that uh, it's just almost always on. The same goes for the Zener diode and uh, I noticed that uh, the quality of the Zener diode matters a lot because cheap Chinese Zener diodes like the ones I have been using have a relatively high leakage current. Uh, that means that if you change the value of R2 to something very high, like uh, 3K, uh, this would actually cause uh, the Zener diode to essentially conduct through the uh, transistor, uh, because uh, there's just enough current leaking through the Zener diode uh, in order to pass through the high resistance of the base of a transistor and turn the red LED off prematurely. Uh, we can't see it in the simulator uh, because this is an ideal Zener but it's essentially as if we have a, a perhaps 100k resistor in parallel with the Zener diode. And that's pretty much all as to how this circuit works. I'm going to implement this in my big Canon 800D battery pack uh, because it has no intelligence, it has no monitoring system right now, so I'm constantly confused as to whether or not my camera is charged. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this bit of a circuit trivia useful. I've provided links to the simulator as well as this circuit loaded into the simulator down below if you want to play around with it and make your own version. This can of course be applied to all kinds of voltages and all kinds of response ranges. By trimming the values of these three components you can make this uh, a 1 volt range or you can make it a 100 volt range. It doesn't quite matter. So thank you for watching. Cheerio.